the attack of Lawrence, Kansas by William Quantrill on August 21, 1863 was probably the largest atrocity committed in the American Civil War. Hello, Wyoming Traveler here, and I am at uh, Lawrence, Kansas, and we're going to take a tour of Quantrill's Raid. The seeds of the Lawrence Raid was planted eight years before. Between 1855 and 1859, pro- and anti-slavery factions attempted to influence the status of slavery in Kansas. The activities between the groups were so murderous that it is known in history as Bleeding Kansas. Lawrence was the center of anti-slavery factions in Kansas, and many anti-slavery groups headquartered in and around Lawrence. In 1856, a group of pro-slavery men rode into Lawrence, destroyed the printing offices of the two newspapers, burned the hotel and the homes of a prominent anti-slavery leader, and looted the town. Only one person died and that was a pro-slavery man who was accidentally killed. By the time of the Civil War, Lawrence was a target for pro-Southern forces. Lawrence had become the headquarters for Union forces conducting incursions into Missouri. In September 1861, James Lane, the future Kansas Senator, led Kansas troops on a raid of Osceola, Missouri. They damaged and stole property worth a million dollars and took everything from horses and wagons to home furnishings and personal items. The Jayhawkers got drunk, insulted the citizens, court-martialed and summarily executed nine men. They returned to Kansas with everything they could carry. On their way out, they burned the town. One of Quantrill's raiders stated, that they found three grand pianos in the home of Senator Lane. In his own words, William Quantrill stated the reason for the raid on K Lawrence was for plunder and revenge for Osceola. Other members of the band had their own reason for revenge. Jayhawkers had raided the people of western Missouri both pro-Southern and pro-Union. The men with Quantrill had their individual personal reasons. Some were for revenge and others for individual desire for plunder. In an attempt to end the Southern guerrilla raiding into Kansas, the Union commander had ordered the arrest of anyone giving aid or comfort to the Confederates. This meant the female relatives of the guerrillas, since the men were away fighting. Ten women and girls, all under the age of 20, were housed in a vacant home in Kansas City. On August 13, 1863, the building collapsed, killing five and injuring several others. While the Lawrence raid had already been planned, this incident only added to the anger of the raiders and further motivated them for revenge. Quantrill, with about 450 men, arrived on the outskirts of Lawrence around 5 o'clock in the morning. The raid was carefully planned. The raiders had a list of men to be killed and buildings to be burned. This map in the Lawrence Museum gives details of the movement of the raiders during the attack and shows points of interest. This was the home of uh, Robert Miller, who was the first person that was killed in the Quantrill Raid. The house was built in 1858. Raiders came up this street shooting at any man that they saw and yelling and 
then here at this corner was a camp for black uh, recruits for the Union Army. Uh, the recruits, upon hearing the uh, shooting and yelling, fled down into a ravine and hid. These recruits were unarmed and therefore could not have put up any resistance. On the site of this parking garage was an encampment of Kansas volunteers. There was about 21 of them, uh, mostly teenagers. Quantrill's men ran through the camp and shot 17 of the 21 recruits. This was the commercial district of Lawrence back in 1863. Raiders rode along this street, looting the various stores, homes, and then setting them on fire. This is the Eldridge Hotel. In 1863, it was the end of the business district. It also housed the Union Army headquarters in the town. It was surrounded and between 50 and 60 individuals surrendered on the promise that their lives would be spared. However, they were relieved of any valuables uh, that they had. And then the hotel was burned. In 1863, this quiet park was a steep ravine, and many of the citizens of Lawrence fled here to hide from the raiders. However, some were discovered and cold-bloodedly shot. Many men saved their lives by hiding in areas of heavy vegetation, such as at this park, or in bushes or cornfields. The raiders would not go into areas where they did not have a clear line of fire. The museum tells the history of the city of Lawrence with information about the raid. It also gives out a self-guided tour brochure for those who want to follow the course of the raid. The raid lasted for four hours, and when it was over, a quarter of the town was burned, including all but two businesses. Most of the banks and stores had been looted. The most tragic aspect of the raid was the killing of over 150 unarmed men and boys. At this point, I want to clarify the term boy as used and the 19th century. When people in the 19th century used boy, they generally referred to any male, teenager, and younger. As I mentioned earlier, the Kansas recruits killed in this raid were all teenagers. The youngest victim of the massacre was probably 14 years old and he may have been wearing a Union uniform. Most of Quantrill's men were teenagers, the youngest being 13. 
a boy whose mother sent him to Quantrill after their home had been burned and his father killed by Union troops. At the Battle of Newmarket, the youngest VMI cadet was 15. The others were older. Many soldiers in the Civil War armies were teenagers. Even younger boys served as musicians, some as young as 9 or 10. While the raid on Lawrence was devastating in both property and loss of life, the consequences of the raid for the people of western Missouri may have been worse. One contemporary account states the Lawrence raid was followed by a swift and cruel retribution. The Kansas troops went into western Missouri. They accosted unarmed old men and boys and accused them of being raiders and shot them down. Their homes were then burned and their families left to fend for themselves. In an official response to the attack on Lawrence, General Thomas Ewing, the Union Department Commander, ordered the eviction of all people in four Missouri counties along the Kansas border. Jayhawkers then looted and burned virtually everything in those counties. As General Sherman said, war is hell, and guerrilla warfare is hell magnified. Quantrill, after the raid, successfully evaded pursuing Union troops. That fall, he located his force in Texas. While in Texas, the group quarreled and broke up into different factions. In the spring of 1865, Quantrill and a few followers went raiding into western Kentucky. There he was wounded in a fight with Union forces and died a few days later from his wounds. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it and would like to see other videos, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Thank you.